um, let's just jump right into this. I, we're probably going to hit some nerves on this. Now, um, the Black Lives Matter movement, founded by Black women, right? Yes. So we were talking during the break um, about in including Black men and Black men being at the forefront for Black women because it's no secret that Black women are constantly on the forefront of not only fights that Black folks need to fight for, but everybody else's fight. We everybody's savior. We're everybody's mom, it feels like. So are, is there a lack of leadership with our men? This is not a bashing session either, but I just want to know, are there any movements that Black men are, are at the forefront of fighting for women? Because over the weekend, I don't know if you saw the video of the young Black men that hit the Black girl in the face with a skateboard. There's another video of a brother throwing a woman in, in a trash, in a dumpster. And we are sitting here in the middle of this Black Lives Matter thing, and we have to really, we, we have to show each other that each other's Black Lives Matter as well, correct? You know, you're on mute. I'm sorry. I want to pull that in a little bit because I think the argument is really started um, by folks who don't actually know Black liberation history. And so when we're looking at the way history is actually moving, it's moved through a very white patriarchal view. And white patriarchal view loves to keep things on the dichotomy of like, is this male or is this female? It keeps the things very gendered. That's very weird to me. And so um, unfortunately, there haven't been any movements that have actually been created by Black men. And it's not a thing that's like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, against Black men or anything. But people really have to look at the labor uh, movement was created by black women who were like, we're not getting ready to keep washing your clothes. The um, LGBTQ plus movement was created by black trans women. Um, even the voting rights movement was created by black women. And so every movement that we have seen, the civil rights movement was jumped off by black women. And so was this iteration of the black liberation movement. As you see black women time and time again, regardless of who is killed, regardless of who is killed, regardless of who is killed, goes to the front line for everyone. Black trans lives, black non-binary lives, black men, black children. So it's not, it, it, that ruffles my feathers too, because now we're drawing it back off again. I feel like Don in this situation, we're talking about the state who in Louisville, uh, the LMPD budget is $190 million. We can feed over 20,000 people for one year with $100 million. That's in Louisville alone. And Louisville's not really a small city. Um, LMPD budget is 190 million. We can take 100 million of that and turn those vacant homes, 1,300 of them, mind you, there's almost like 4,000, and put people in them and give them political power by owning property. So when we're talking about like who is leading what, we need you to just pick it up and come on with it. Like just the same way that Melina said, show up. How do we include our, our brothers more? Cause I want to see more solidarity. I, I don't want it to be a male versus female thing. I don't want it to be like, where y'all at all the time. I want to be, to get more inclusive. I'm going to keep my name short here in Long Beach. So <laughs> this is, um, I'm going to go just a little bit slow, but still short because um, we recognize the harm that has been like the intentional harm to decimate black families. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the, you know, I was talking with an elder, black male elder who we were talking about the crack, the crack era, right? The war on drugs, the war on black people, right? There was no bodies or entities saying this is an epidemic and let's create some rehabilitation. So no, we folks were left hung out to dry, wanted to criminalize it, put our people in jail for it, right? A lot of men in jail for it, women in jail for it. And it's like this generation, it, we're um, left with having to rebuild, rebuild our Tulsa, Oklahomas, rebuild our Black Wall Streets, our Rosewoods. And having these conversations in the hood, and I'm just gonna say in the hood, our Black men are everywhere, right? Our Black men are in whatever other institutions and spaces, but I'm gonna say in the hood because for me, I'm talking about marginalized communities. I'm talking about grassroots folks. And the conversation around how they're building, there's a certain distrust, there's a certain disconnect with our local powers, with our local systems, even with organizations inside and outside Black community, right? There are, there are resource and foundation gatekeepers that exist of a generation that, that are not ready right now to disrupt the status quo, right? And so these brothers are the ones who are restarting these businesses. These brothers are, are doing the training and uh, development and leadership around trades work, around construction, around electrical work, for not just men, for young women. Um, and so, you know, 
here in Long Beach, like it's twofold. It's multifold, not even two, right? It's just multifold. For our gay and queer, we're getting ready to have an event with our LGBTQ, I like how you just say plus, uh, uh, Chanel, thank you, community right here. But they're taking our lead and the leadership of black gay, black lesbian, black queer uh, leaders who are part of our local uh, gay lesbian center and part of Long Beach community. But they are leading that work. And so when it moves that way, when it's being led by impacted communities, it works. If it's being led by other folks who want to uphold these white supremacist views, that's when it's questionable. We have folks now who want to come out and put that big color yellow, you know, drawing on our streets. But if you're not helping to move this agenda, whoever you are, whatever titles you hold and represent, if, if you are not doing the work to move these demands and win, why, why are you proposing anything else? It, a parade, some paint, some whatever. If you are not moving this agenda, it's questionable, right? And so I'll, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> well, you know, it's easy to do the gesture that you can post on social media or that can make the news, but it's not easy to do the work where you're really getting your hands dirty where there's no likes involved. So I think, you know, that's, that's, I think that's what you ladies have been saying pretty much. Like, yeah, that's cool. You can draw something on a sidewalk. You can post pictures. You can retweet something. But are you getting your hands dirty? Are you putting yourself at risk? of getting shot with a rubber bullet in the face, which has blinded at least five people so far.